my dog wants to play with me. All right, so 4.19, um, I started to merge over to it, and I got all the hard stuff done, and I noticed on GitHub that um, they're having some issues with it, and they're still working on it. And since I can't full test yet on a finished engine version, um, I said I'd take one of my bucket list items off and work on that for a while. And the one I chose was gestures. And um, I wasn't willing before to really work on gesturing because there was a marketplace uh, plugin that worked really well for it, as far as I was aware. And there's a couple other solutions available. And um, I didn't want to step on toes, and they, I didn't feel like I could provide anything over what they did at the time. But I've been thinking about it, you know, off and on, and just thought I had enough optimizations and improvements that I should just go ahead and do it. So, shipping with 4.18, since 4.19 is due out next week, and I should have this done this weekend, I'm going to add in this gesturing system. Um, so, I'll go over it. It uses a dynamic time warp algorithm. I was thinking about uh, hid Markov models, but and combination of the two, but there's a nice uh, single header file dynamic time work and imp warp implementation and a couple other more advanced ones that I ran into. So I figured I could start with the single header file one, implement it, and then tweak in the improvements of the more advanced versions later. And in Markov models are less generic. You can do more with this with things like voice detection and stuff later on too. So I said just go with this. Um, I was mostly done implementing it when I was looking at other people's implementations to see what was the differences so I could mention them. And I ran into um, Roomberg's plugin. He actually uses the same algorithm. I recognized the code from the header file. And um, I kind of felt bad about that. So I mentioned him in the header file as using the same code, and I'll probably talk to him about some of the optimizations I made to mine so that he can roll them into his if he wants as well. Um, but I guess I should talk about it. So normally, you're supposed to use a VR gesture component on the motion controllers because it's a direct source. I made a wand for fun and because it lets me display debug data and just you know, have a centralized location to do some functions. Um, it's not as efficient at the end of a wand since, you know, jitter and stuff I mean, it's hard to control on thin objects in vr but it does work i mean you can still draw circles you can still draw stars with it oops i missed the end of the star yeah there we go i just lowered the accuracy of drawing a star so i need to tweak the variables a little bit um so let's go over dynamic time warp uh, dynamic time warp is an algorithm that will match up uh, points of interest over time so you can draw something really quickly or you can draw something really slowly and it doesn't matter to it which is why it's good for voice and why it's pretty good for VR gestures um, I run into where the default implementation since it's taking sampled points couldn't tell that something was the same shape when it was drawn small or when it was drawn large because, you know, it's sampling points here and you were drawing here or little tiny bits in there. So what I took is I took a boundary of all points of sampled, um, all points sam sampled, and um, I made a scalar where it will scale them all to the same maximum boundary, which on here is target gesture scale of 100. So it'll scale all gestures to the size of one of these blocks. By default, you can change it. And that means that you can draw a small circle, you can draw a large circle, anything in between, and it'll detect it as a circle. Which means it should be a lot quicker to do gestures because you can just go like, you just draw them out. I need to work on my S shape. I did like a long tail on it and it's hard to detect now. All right, so settings. Um, I'm using a data asset to store everything because it's, the only real database available besides making a custom editor plugin, which I don't feel like doing. I've done it in the past, but I don't feel like it's necessary for this. So I'm just using a data asset. It stores gestures in it, which you can record with the uh, gesture component and then save out with a function from it. And it'll save it to whatever you have set as the gesture database for the component. 
and it'll auto-generate whatever name you give it, and you can rename it when you open up the database. Um, gesture types there for if you know you want to record multiple different types of circles, like this oval. You can still call it a circle for some reason. And then you can detect a circle and an oval as a circle, and you can change them to the same type and use them for your code. So gesture types for your use. Uh, samples is the samples that are recorded. You don't really care about that generally. Gesture size is the auto-calculated size of the gesture, which it uses to scale these. Um, when it goes to save out to a database, it'll automatically scale it to that database's set size. And then so this will be a maximum of, for this one, 100 units on whichever um, axis is the longest. And if you ever change the target gesture scale, you'll want to call a function on the gesture database um, that recalculates the scale and size of all the gestures contained within it. On to gesture settings, these are the things that you're going to be tweaking to make a gesture detect better or worse. In some cases you want gestures to be detected less often. Like this S had been detected too much and I lowered how accurate it was, which is why it's not really detecting at the moment. I never tested it before recording this video. Um, Minimum gesture length is the minimum amount of inputs before it will detect a gest that gesture. So say you're doing the star, which has quite a few inputs. Yeah, let me draw it right. I didn't draw it right again. Uh, oh, that's right. I was doing one of the arms wrong. Um, so minimum gesture length of one means it'll, as soon as there's a sampling input, it'll start trying to find that gesture. But for something like the star, where there's a lot of input points into it, and you don't, to, for performance reasons or because it's been detected too early, you can set the gesture length to like uh, well, stars members is like 58 sample points or something. So you could set minimum uh, gesture length to like 20, and won't even try to find the star until it hits uh, 20 inputs. Uh, first threshold is how easy it is to decide to start looking for a gesture out of the sample data. What it does is it looks for the last position drawn, which is why I ended it before the circle there. And if it's close enough to the end position, then it starts detecting it as a gesture. So um, raising or lowering that will make it easier or harder to um, detect. This is the distance value, so higher is easier to start detecting. Full threshold is each point along the chain, how easy it is to detect, detect it. So raising that makes it easier to detect a gesture, lowering it makes it harder. These are the three values, that, generally these two, the thresholds that you will tweak per gesture to um, make it easier or harder to detect that gesture. So mostly you'll be modifying these two. Uh, very rarely will you need the minimum gesture length. The mirror mode is in here so that you can sample a gesture once in one direction, like a circle, and then you can use it in either direction. So a circle can be detected backwards and forwards because I have it set to mirror both. You can also set it to mirror left or mirror right, or you can set the VR gesture component to be on your left or right hand, set the enum for which hand it's on, and then it'll mirror it if it's on the one that matches the setting on the gesture. So if you wanted the circle to go this way on the left hand and this way on the right hand, you go mirror right and set this, and then when it's on this hand and it goes in that direction, it detect the circle and not the other way. That's mostly useful for things like the star, because if you want the star to be detected that way on this hand, but you want to draw it this way on this hand, which is how it's normally done, then you would set the mirror right. Uh, enabled is if it's even enabled, so you can have gestures in the database that aren't currently allowed. They won't be uh, used by unchecking that. Uh, that's the gist of it. I'm going to have a bunch of the blueprint nodes documented and exampled in this wand. I tried making a spline editor. Um, but the problem with the spline editor is it's a little too machine perfect with how I am uh, generating the sample points along the spline. So it doesn't create very easy to detect gestures or too easy to detect gestures if you have sample curves on and generates the spline curves around these points. So I need to tweak it a little bit. The goal originally was to be able to make one that um, you could draw you know, perfect gestures with get them you know, nearly perfect and be like, hey, that's what I want it to work as. But it needs tweaking, so I'm not going to, I'm going to work on that over time. It's just a blueprint actor anyways. Um, but anyways, I'll be shipping this with 4.18.
uh, since 4.19 releases next week. And then, um, I don't know, it should be working. Pretty good. I just have to tweak some things since I added this target gesture scale yesterday, and I never got into VR to tweak the settings so that they work correctly. So I'll be doing that and then releasing it. Oh, uh, it does have the option to draw splines or debug lines for the gestures when you're drawing them out. Uh, splines obviously are prettier. Um, it's fairly performant because there's a max buffer size for the gesture input points. And when it hits it, it removes the component on the spline and reuses it at the front again. So you're not spawning components constantly. It starts off with um, like you know one or two components when you do your first drawings in a game, but then it never spawns more than the buffer size and it keeps them until the component is destroyed. I'll also be adding a method for you know you provide a spline component and it'll autofill it with a gesture data that you want and then generate the spline mesh attached to that so that you know you can draw specific gestures for you know representation of them or whatever. But um I think that's it. Uh, this should be out this weekend, I think, assuming I get these threshold values back to where it detects everything correctly again. Because it's a little buggy ever since I um, added the target gesture scale. But this should be solvable. All right. Bye.